said the ruling doesn't automatically grant parole, just the right to review, which could lead to parole. Now, remember that Missouri University professor who screamed, We want muscles! We want muscle! Remember her? That gingy-haired one? You know the type. You know the type of girl, the pushy girl who uses the muscle of the thugs during the riots on the campus? She tried to throw a reporter off the campus who was covering it, and he wouldn't leave. She said, we want muscle over here. Well, MU professor Melissa Click, who called for muscle to remove reporter charged with assault. <laughs> By the way, she's still there as a tenured professor. Assistant professor of the Department of Communications. By the way, this is the biggest joke of all communications. <laughs> okay, I, I don't even want to go in there. What's the point of bashing that? Okay, let's take some calls, 855-400-7282 on the Savage Nation. And until we get you uh, up on the board, be patient, because there's so many people calling right now. We have exactly one open line, 855-400-7282. Obama goes on in clip number five to say that the GOP debates are just performance art. Now, what's interesting here is that there are no Democrat debates at all. It's a stooge act between uh, Hillary and Bernie Sanders, the spritzer. The GOP is an actual debate, a true debate. But listen to what the lying president says in 05. Their performance art, as opposed to talking about stuff. They're, they're, they're useful in the sense of uh, seeing how somebody performs. And you know what? Some of the presidency's performance. And I've been criticized, probably in some cases, fairly for not uh, effectively uh, uh, you know, promoting uh, my ideas. Excuse me, what did he just say? Robert, do you know what the President of the United States just said? He calls the Republican debate, debates performance art while not saying one word about the uh, Harridan versus the commie. Now we go to the Harridan. Clinton laughs off questions about a lack of enthusiasm about her candidacy. In clip six, you know, I, I feel great that we have the level of enthusiasm uh, that we do. And we also yeah. have a really good team on the ground that has been working for months to make sure that it's not just here today, gone tomorrow. But people are involved. They are mm -hmm. really reached out to. And mm -hmm. yes, uh, mm -hmm. we believe they're going to come caucus. So, you know, this speculation and all the rest of caucus. it is uh Entertaining, I admit that, mm -hmm. but we're just going to keep mm -hmm. moving forward and do the work that we think is going to be successful on February 1st. She's whistling in the dark. She's whistling in the dark. Unbelievable to me. Hillary says Bloomberg won't run if I... Why is Bloomberg throwing his nose into this? What is that about? He knows no one likes him outside of the environs of one zip code in Manhattan. The man is liked within one zip code in Manhattan, which surrounds the mayor's uh, uh, residence, which means that the few staff members left there still like him. How could this man do this? Because he was jealous that Trump trumped him on this? So let's skip Hillary on that. And then let's go to Hillary now attacking the FBI in clip eight. Eight, I'm not concerned because I know what the facts are. I never sent or received any material marked classified. I cannot control what the Republicans leak and what they are contending Excuse me, Mrs. Clinton. Mrs. Clinton, the world knows that you sent such top secret emails on your private server that even senior members of Congress are not, are not allowed to read them. That's a fact. It's, it's a fact, Mrs. Clinton. And you can't take back facts, Mrs. Clinton, no matter how you try to lie your way out of it. Listen to clip nine. Back a couple of months ago, Kevin McCarthy spilled the beans that the Benghazi mm -hmm. uh, investigation was all about bringing me down, something that I suspected, but I went ahead, testified for 11 hours, answered all their questions, all and right, even they admitted... Yeah, of course it's to bring you down, because you, you committed a crime. Of course they bring you down. You let men die at Benghazi. Of course it was to bring you down, but you were smarter than the dunces, the weaklings on the Republican Party. Hillary on Sanders, can you imagine this person as commander-in-chief? She said that. Oh, let me hear one, 11. I finally agree with Hillary Clinton. I can't believe this. I said that on Thursday. Listen to number 11. When I am out there talking with people about what we have to go up against uh, here at home, get the economy working for everybody, not just those yeah, at the right. top, begin yeah, to raise hot, incomes, which hasn't happened, uh, yeah. deal with health care, going from 90% mm -hmm. coverage, which is what we have under the Affordable Care Act now, to 300% uh, percent percent, and I lay out what I 
intend to do to get there. Uh, oh, I can boy. only tell you that I see people nodding. I know people are signing up. As, uh, so they, they, it's not good enough to have socialized medicine for 90% of the population. She would like it so you get free health care, and they give you a check for $1,000 every time you come in. Well, what is she talking about? Where does this money come from? Now it gets even more personal in number 12. It is very personal, and people look and they think, you know, can we imagine this person to be president and commander-in-chief? And because of my experience, uh, and particularly my years as Secretary of State working with President Obama, mm -hmm. I think that's something that people really take into account. Wait a minute, your years as Secretary of State when you unleashed the Arab Spring on the world and caused the refugee crisis that the world is now experiencing, that makes you commander-in-chief? That makes you a psycho criminal. We live in such a country that a criminal act like that is not punished. That's what it means. Not that it makes you a commander-in-chief. Now it, we're saving the best soundbite of this segment for this one. To many people, George Soros is a rogue who should have been arrested by Interpol a long time ago. But because he is so wealthy and so powerful and has bought so many politicians and owns so many media outlets, he acts as though he is as innocent as the driven snow. Listen to number 13. Donald Trump is doing the work of ISIS. Uh, uh, ISIS, oh, 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 uh, and before that, Al Qaeda discovered the Achilles heel of Western civilization, uh, the fear of death. And when it, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it uh, interferes with reason. Did you hear what he just said? It made no sense, incidentally. He took three disconnected sentences and put them together. Donald Trump, he says, is doing the work of ISIS. ISIS and before that Al-Qaeda has discovered the Achilles heel of Western civilization, the fear of... It interferes with reason. Sounds like he has phlegm in his throat. The man has phlegm in his brain. How do he make so many billions of dollars betting against money? Okay, so here is a man who many think should be arrested. The minute Interpol catches him anyway, he should be arrested and his assets seized for what he has done to this country and the world. Now he's attacking Donald Trump. Actually, there's a P on that, Mr. Uh, Soros. His last name has a P on the end of it. It's not Donald Trump. Maybe that's how you did it in old uh, Hungary. You, you drop the P at the end of the uh, word. But in English, there's a P at the end of the word. You say Trump. You don't say Donald Trump. Back in a minute. Is the uh, Savage Nation? Let's take a quick call, okay? Dane, KSFO, San Francisco. What's on your mind? Yeah, Mike. Uh, many a times uh, when I'm listening, you say, uh, "If you agree with me, raise your hand." Well, this is a true story. I raised my hand in my car. Look to the left of me. I see a woman raising her hand, and we looked at each other, smiled, and laughed. You were talking about Trump, and we now two together have raised uh, over 150 people together. We've got for Trump staunch reporters. In July, we're having a massive event just from listening to you and raising my hand in the car, as you do so all the time. It, it was a, a classic moment, and two people who never met each other before have now have 150 people. We have a big That's amazing. Board. And that's just in, Sa in the San Francisco area. You know, years ago, I remember being on an uh, early evening, and I would say to people, if you're listening to the show right now, they say I don't exist, flash your headlights for Savage, and I go, one two, three, and then lights would go. And people would call from Texas, New York, San Francisco. They'd say, Mike, I saw cars flashing their lights. So the audience is pretty big. It's much bigger than you would imagine. I'm excluded from every conversation. If the New York Times refers to uh, talk show hosts or if despicable people who report on Fox News talk about talk show hosts, they never mention me because the unpopular reality is is that I am the intellectual leader of the conservative movement in the United States media. No matter what anyone may say, it's been my books, it's been my leadership, it's been my motto, borders, language, and culture for years. But I, don't, I really don't need that credit. What I need is people to understand the danger we are in. I'm going to tell you something now that's going to be a topic for tomorrow. Do you know who invented the word racist? Give me your immediate impression of the word racist. It is the most effective fear word in the leftist arsenal. And they've used it to give us Barack Obama. They've used it to brainwash young children and young college students. They've used the word racist to teach people to hate their own nation. They've used it to teach white children to hate their own race. They've used it to teach 
white people to hate their own culture. Who invented the word racism? One of the two. Dane, stay on the line because you're not going to believe what I'm telling you. Did you know that the word racism was not developed by a liberal sociologist? It was not developed in the 1960s. It was not developed by the Democratic Party. The word racism was invented by none other than one of the architects of the Soviet prison camp, the founder and first leader of the infamous Red Army, Leon Trotsky. And this is an incredible article by Dustin Stanley in a blog that I found. And he goes to the original Russian, and it shows Leon Trotsky's 1930 work, The History of the Russian Revolution, from which he shows a passage. And the last word in that passage is a Russian word, which in Latin transliteration means racists. And what he was referring to were Slavs in the old Soviet Union who loved their native culture and way of life and wanted to protect their way of life. The communist Trotsky saw them as impediments to his international communist plans. So when you use the word racism, you are being a very good Trotskyite. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Let's move on to some of the headlines on michaelsavage.com. Let's see what I have up there. UK. New reforms give immigrants with more than one wife extra benefits. Isn't that tolerant? Isn't that wonderful on the Cameron that if someone from, let's say, a throwback country that beats their women, beats their children, wants to have six of them like six puppies, and he dresses them head to toe. Take a look at that piece of garbage with the headscarf on. Take a look at that filth that they brought in there. That filth can walk the streets of England, and I can't. Look at him. He's walking around with two wives with black covering their whole bodies. They look like they're wearing tent awnings that fell down upon them. And that's marching around England. He gets more benefits because he has extra wives. How can a nation survive its fools? It cannot. Look how we're doing in this country under the fool in the White House. He thinks he's fooling the world. Two Israeli injured, one in critical condition by Palestinian terrorists. You don't care about that. Another one broke into a house and stabbed the mother in front of six children. What's the difference? Another one broke in and stabbed two women today in their houses in, in, in Israel. What's the difference? Just Jews. Jewish blood's cheap. Glenn Beck says he prefers Bernie Sanders over Trump. I mean, you're surprised? Let's see what else. Uh, is dementia risk falling? Shows a surprising drop in some countries. The risk of dementia and Alzheimer's. Would you believe that? Isn't that good news? The sky is not falling, by the way, and everything. Some things are good. Now, let me give you a quick one-minute diversion if you're just listening and you're bored to death because you were in the snow and the slush and the football and you want to hear about idiots with balls banging into each other. God bless you. It's a big world. There's a lot of people in it. People have to do what they have to do. Uh, one of my hobbies is watching birds. I live next to the water in San Francisco. There's thousands of sea fowl of many species feeding on the sardines. And it's very reassuring for a while. And now I, I can't stand it. I want to get out the shotgun. They're waking me. They're keeping me awake at night. They're squawking as the schools come in next to the house, driving me nuts. The house stinks of like, the house even stinks of the fish that they're ripping apart with the eggs falling out. Of course, I'm not going to shoot them. I mean, they're doing what they do. But one of the things that I love about all of this is that it shows that San Francisco Bay is so healthy. The birds are healthy. The fish are healthy. Do you know why the birds are healthy and the fish are healthy and the water is relatively clean? Because of environmental wackos from 40 years ago. The very environmental wackos that oafs in the media call environmental wackos, because of them, we have clean waters, cleaner waters, cleaner air uh, than you would ever imagine. Had there been no environmental wackos, as some cigar-smoking oafs in the media would have you believe, the bays would be polluted. The air would be unbreathable. Do you understand that this is where government comes in? Do you understand that limited government is required, that we can't live in anarchy? So I'm telling you that without the environmental wackos, you know what you'd have? L let alone San Francisco Bay, which is rather pure right now. You can eat the fish. The birds are healthy. It's because of the environmental wackos of 40 years ago. I'm trying to explain something to you. See, you can be a knee-jerk conservative just as you can be a knee-jerk liberal. And that's something I've been trying to tell you now for weeks. Knee-jerk conservatives 
say the same thing every day. 